greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One more Sunday virtual in your homes or wherever you are. We are so blessed that we can come together like this and worship the Lord, hear the word and be together and remember the Lord. This Sabbath, this Sunday, we remember what the Lord did for us. We are grateful, we are thankful for all his blessings over our life for keeping us in the best of health, for being our Jehovah Jireh, a provider. Let's come with a heart filled with gratitude. Amen. Let's not have, have any space in our heart for fear or any kind of doubt, but know that your God, your Redeemer lives. And because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Yeah. You know, He's a good God and we want to worship Him. Uh, I'll ask Pastor Joes to open in prayer and even as we move ahead with the service today. Amen. Hallelujah. Greetings to your church once again. Uh, as uh, Pastor Sylvia said, we're coming together once again as a family of God. It's a joy and a privilege in the midst of this pandemic that we can meet the prayer. Uh, we can come in the presence of God even though like this. But I know we miss the physical uh, uh, closeness and being around. But let me tell you. Uh, there is something much stronger, much greater than all that is the shed blood of Jesus which unites us as a family. So even though the distance is there, but we are one in the spirit. And let's together this morning come in the presence of God, surrender our lives, surrender ourselves. We are not perfect vessels. We have our own uh, shortcomings, our failures. And we have, in spite of knowing Jesus is our best friend and savior of our lives and in having the Holy Spirit of God abiding inside of us. There are times that we do things which are not pleasing unto him. We do say things which are not pleasing unto him. We act things which are not pleasing unto him. We, we, we think of things which we should not be thinking. So this is the moment before we come into his throne room, before we enter the Holy of Holies, to surrender our lives at his feet. I would, wherever you are, you can come up to your feet, maybe just lift your hands or maybe you're sitting, just lift your hands. I just want you to surrender your all to the Lord this morning. And even as we come before his presence, let's come with that clean spirit let's come surrendering our lives surrendering ourselves and even as you lift your hands and you just uh, uh, lift up your hands as a mark of surrender saying lord here i am just as i am with my weaknesses with my failures uh, i come to you lord seeking your divine intervention seeking your divine touch seeking your divine help so that lord i be that vessel of glory that you want to be me to be hallelujah you will spend this few seconds in silence. I want the Spirit of God to just sweep over each one of our lives so that we get a chance to do a self check and allow the Holy Spirit of God to do His work in our lives in our inner man. And we can experience His touch right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did for each one of us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, it's only because of your shed blood. It's only because of your great sacrifice, Lord, your death and your resurrection, which gives us hope of eternity, Lord, which gives us promise of salvation. And Lord, every time we come and we acknowledge our sin before you, Lord, you're there to forgive, to forget, to cleanse us with your precious blood, Lord. Lord, this morning we surrender our lives, surrender our sails. Lord, we lift up our uh, our entire being before you. You know us. Nothing is hidden from your heavenly gaze. And we ask your pardon, your cleansing, Lord. We ask you to touch us. Yes. Cleanse us with your precious blood, Lord. And make us pure, white as snow. Because, Lord, your words say the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And, Lord, we want to enter your presence. We want to enter your holy of holies this morning with a clean and righteous spirit of Father. Lord, no, not because of good works, not because of the act that we have done. Lord, because of what you did on the cross, oh Lord. Jesus, we pray that you just take control, take charge, remove what is not of you from our lives and make us worthy vessels to enter your holy of holies, to experience your touch, to experience your love, to experience your miracle working power yes. in our lives, Lord. We commit ourselves into your hands and Lord, we commit the service into your hands, the entire service, right from the start till the end, every aspect of the yes, service, Lord. we pray will be filled with your presence, filled with your power and Lord, your name will be glorified, edified and Lord, your people will be touched and ministered to Lord. Take control, take charge, Lord, right from the beginning till the end, Lord. And Lord, let everybody who's there watching and being with us and participating in the service, Lord, let them be blessed beyond measure this morning, Lord. That they will be filled to the overflow and every need and every desire which is in your perfect will and plan will come to pass in the lives of your people. 
take control take charge let your presence flow in our midst this morning in jesus precious name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. over to the worship team and even as we worship come on come to our feet church let's celebrate jesus this morning hi church good morning how are you doing have a happy sunday let's declare faith over fear and through these through this week let's know that god is
here and for the wonderful way that the Spirit of God continues to lead us, guide us and teach us. Thank God that we are never alone, that He's with us all through our thick and our thin and all through those storms and those good times and bad times that He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Hallelujah. Praise God for His sweet presence here. This morning, I just want you to be knowing this, that this is what the Lord is saying to all of us, that His resurrection power is inside each one of us. And uh, the Lord was just ministering and just uh, encouraging me to share this with you. And I want you to know this, that this is what the Spirit of God is saying to you and me, that His miracle working power is inside of us. This is what the Lord is saying, that my presence inside, is, inside of you is more than enough. For every child of God who's accepted Jesus the Lord and Master and Savior and believes that He's the Son of God who died for His sins and who rose again on the third day. The Lord said there is a miracle working power inside of you. If you believe and you trust my word, the Lord says nothing is impossible for you. So I want you to know this church this morning that this is what the Lord is saying, that there is a miracle inside of you. And every time you stretch your faith, every time you exercise your faith, you can see a miracle because it's not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the most high God who lives inside of you. Because his, you are his temple and the Lord says even as you live that life which is in pleasing in my ways and in obedience to my word and my command. And even as you trust me and you declare, the Lord says you will see the miracle working power work through you. So I want you to trust the Lord this morning. And this is what the Lord is saying in the coming month. In the coming month, this is the last month of 2020. The Lord says you are going to see innumerable uh, miracles in every area of our life. But you have to stretch your faith. You have to believe. You have to declare. And you have to uh, see the miracle working power of God work through you. But the Lord says stretch your faith. Stretch your faith and know that I am with you. And if I am with you, I am the majority. So nothing is too difficult for you. It's not you who are doing the miracle. It's I who resides inside of you in the power of my spirit. Who is going to do a create a miracle through you. The Lord says believe. All through December, you're going to see miracles and this miracle is going to happen because of you. Because you will stretch your faith and you will see the miracle. Church, if you receive that word, just put your hand on your chest. Put your hand on your forehead. Will you put your hand on your mouth and believe that the Lord's presence is more than enough. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord can make it happen. So just trust the Lord. You may be facing situations where you don't know what to do. You may be in a, in a condition where you don't know where your next provision is going to come from. But just trust the Lord and the promise of his word and believe the miracle is inside of you. And even as you declare it and you believe it and you re reach out in faith, you are going to see his resurrection power. Even dead situations, impossible situations are going to be made possible because we serve a miracle working God. Amen. So receive that and be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let's move ahead and I'll ask Pastor Sylvia to join me. And we're going to uh, continue to pray for Unite 714 prayer. This is the 37th week that we as a, a corporate family of God across the globe, uh, uh, thousands of churches together are uniting in one spirit, one mind right from the time the pandemic began. We are believing and we are standing together as a, as, as a universal church praying this prayer. And every time we are praying, we are believing that the Lord is moving. The Lord is answering our prayer. And the Lord's perfect will is being done in the midst of the situation. And that he is fully aware of what's happening. So we need not be fearful. We need not be anxious. But we just trust and pray this prayer every morning and evening. And unite with the universal church of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
So I'll ask Pastor Sylvia if she reads you will get it on your screen coming. Let's together pray and remember to pray every morning and evening. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's read together from Psalms 149 verses 5 to 9. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples to bind their kings and with chains and their nobles with fretters of iron to execute on them the judgment written this is honor for all his godly ones praise the lord let's pray together lord we have been given an incredible honor we have the privilege to the power of prayer and praise to help execute your will and advance your kingdom on the earth. Whether we find ourselves on the bed of affliction, depression, scarcity or despair, we choose to exult in the glory of who you are. Heavenly Father, fill us with supernatural joy as we embrace our calling to praise and prayer. Scripture clearly promises the end of Satan and the demonic host. We take our stand on these promises today as we renounce unbelief and pronounce your powerful word. In the name of Jesus, we bind the powers and principalities, blinding the peoples of the world, and we ask you for a fresh outpouring of your spirit. We also come before you with high praises in our mouth. Even when it seems like a sacrifice, we live praises that reach to the highest heavens because you are worthy of all praise. No matter how we are feeling or what we are facing, we choose to worship and praise you today. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for mitigating COVID-19. Although we grieve the loss of the thousands who have died, millions more who would already be gone without your help and intervention. We ask you to comfort those who have suffered loss and to grant wisdom and strength to doctors, scientists and first responders. We ask you in the mighty name of your son Jesus to eradicate this pandemic from our planet in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Please remember to pray every morning and evening as a family, as individuals, but remember to declare and to pray this prayer and believe God to answer our prayers, <clears throat> standing with the universal church of God. Amen. This morning we have Sister Mary who is going to be uh, leading us in the communion prayer. So over to Sister Mary. Good morning church. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As we all come together to partake of the communion, I believe you all have kept your communion elements ready. If not, kindly I request to get your elements because this are precious and holy moment where we receive what god has in store for each one of us and i would also like to remind you that this communion table is not a ritual but we are doing it in obedience to the word of god in remembrance of what jesus has done for us for each one of us on the cross and the bread represents the broken body and the cup or the juice represents the shed blood I just want to read a scripture portion from John chapter 6, verses 53 to 58. Let's all read together. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. And as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your father ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Let's all take the elements. Lift the bread along with me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you that your body was broken. Your, your body was beaten for my sickness. Your body was bruised for my iniquities. 
Thank you for making me completely whole and I receive it in Jesus' name. Partake of the bread. Lift the cup along with me. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the shed blood. Thank you that because of your shed blood, all my sins are forgiven. And thank you that my curse is broken. I receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. One more beautiful Sunday as a family of God. We get a privilege and an honor to come as a, as, as a corporate family to sit in His presence, to hear the word of God and to worship the King of Kings and to hear the word of God and to be edified, to be encouraged, to be charged up. This morning, uh, we are so privileged and honored that we have the mighty man of God in our midst who's going to be minister. He's not new to us. His family to us. He, uh, we are so privileged that we are partnering with them and we are a part of their family uh, and uh, the Master's Ministry Trust and Blessing Today Church. And uh, we are so honored to have Pastor Damien Anthony with us and he's going to be sharing the word this morning. So let's all get eagerly ready and let the Holy Spirit of God prepare us, remove every distraction from us. And let's just tune our inner man to receive from the man of God who's uh, we are so honored and privileged to have you, Pastor. And uh, we welcome you and uh, we love you and we continue as a family of God to pray for you and your ministry and, and uh, the church at large. We love to all of you and over to you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to come to Powerhouse Ministries once again with the eternal word of God. Thank you, Pastor Joseph Matthew, Sister Sylvia, the children, and all the leadership out there in Powerhouse Ministries. God is good. Let's all shout together. Let us lift our right hand and shout, God is good. Once again, come on. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Hope you're all doing well and even in this pandemic season, uh, God is good. In my personal life, I witnessed the most number of uh, miracles, enjoyed the most number of blessings, etc. during this pandemic season. When the world is panicking, we cannot panic. Even in the pandemic season, we cannot panic because God is on the throne and nobody can dethrone Him. Shout hallelujah. I'm coming to you with a lot of excitement and expectations from the Lord. Today, the Lord is going to speak to us, I believe. Let's all pray together. Father, we come to the mercy seat, the throne of grace once again with in, in, in boldness and courage with the blood of Jesus. You can never reject a person who is bringing the blood of Jesus into the throne of grace. Father Lord, we yield ourselves before you. Talk to us. Minister to us, O oh Lord. Build our lives. Build this church. And build everyone who is watching this online service today. And in advance, we give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the government of God in our lives. The government of God in our lives. I request all of you to say that together. The government of God in our lives our lives. Let's read a verse from the Bible. Romans chapter 14 and verse number 17. It's a very well-known verse. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I just want to rightly divide this verse so that we can all be nourished from this verse. The kingdom of God. Many people do not have any idea about the kingdom of God. They have heard about many other kingdoms. The kingdom of Cheras and Cholas. The kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The kingdom of Bahrain. And um, the kingdom of 
uh, many other people groups uh, who lived in history or who are living in history right now but the bible speaks about the kingdom of god where is this kingdom situated if you check on the world map or on a globe where can you see the kingdom of god marked nowhere it is not marked at all many of the kingdoms may be there it is very rare that we see the kingdoms india is a republic the republic of india and uh, but there is one thing called the united kingdom that united kingdom is no more united and uh, they are not a united kingdom at all even though there is a queen the royal rule is no longer there in prevail so the kingdom of god means god is the king uh for easier understanding i am going to use the government instead of the kingdom the kingdom of god means the government of god isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 6 says the government shall be upon his shoulders that means jesus who is going to be born isaiah prophesied the so the government shall be on his shoulders and matthew chapter 28 and verse number 18 onwards jesus says all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me so he is the supreme authority he is the sovereign lord so the kingdom of god the government of god is not a matter of drinking and eating and drinking a common man is always thinking about eating and drinking he is studying for that he is working for that he is toiling and moiling for that he is doing a business for that ultimately it is for the sustenance so a common man is always thinking about worrying about eating and drinking eating and drinking drinking and eating in the morning the noon time uh, in the evening during the night one thing that is in their focus is eating and drinking eating and drinking eating and drinking in other words livelihood in other words the physical sustenance but the kingdom of god is not hey the kingdom of god is not a matter of eating and drinking or in other words the kingdom of god is not a matter of this physical thing this physical being the physical body but everybody say but when it, it, when you come across this little word three letter word but b u t but there comes something that is unexpected something that is opposite to what was previously said but righteousness peace and joy the kingdom of god is not two things which are the two things eating drinking but the kingdom of god is three things what are they righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit everybody lift your right hand and say that loud righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit once again please righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit once again please righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit what is righteousness righteousness as you know for many people righteousness is a very religious spiritual theological term which i don't digest no it is so simple righteousness is not a religious term it comes from the law it is it comes from the court uh righteousness means right stand with the authority here it is the right stand with the supreme authority god who is the king by the way how many of you know that our god is not a prime minister how many of you know that our god is not a premier how many of you know that our god is not a president of a system he is never voted in and he will never be voted out god is not elected by a group of people or by angelic beings 
God is the king. He is the king of kings. Meaning there are many other kings in this world. There could be many many kings who rose up in history. But our God is the king of kings. His throne is above all other thrones. So God is the king of kings. And we, because he is the sovereign God, he is the supreme authority, the omnipotent God having all authority in the whole universe, we who are in the kingdom of God or in the, in the government of God, we have to stand the right way before him. according to his law i mean according to his principles his kingdom rule his precepts that is righteousness then the kingdom of god the government of god will bring you peace everybody is a peace hallelujah and this peace one of the specialities of this peace is that this peace passes all human understanding even in this pandemic season you may be you may be really hit by this coronavirus this lockdown this pandemic season but i have great news for you the lord jesus wants to give you his shalom peace hallelujah when all the disciples after his crucifixion they were absconding and they were hiding themselves in a room fearing all the political authorities and religious leaders the high priest and the law priest and all the deacons and all the demons you know as they were frightened jesus without knocking at the door without pressing the calling bell without any such courtesy the resurrected jesus the risen savior ever living savior appeared in the midst of them in the room and the first words that he said was peace be upon you oh, so he is the priest bringer even now i am speaking to you brother young girl young boy all uncles and aunties all children all sunday school children and speaking to you the lord jesus is bringing his shallow what is the speciality of this shallow this is surpassing all human understanding all human intellect all human calculations all human contemplations and plannings and the world cannot give an equivalent peace the world cannot capture steal away this peace from you are you listening to me if you are in the kingdom of god you have perfect peace in the lord righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit hallelujah you can always be joyful so how many of you know that jesus is always joyful how many of you know that in the kingdom of god in the government of god or in heaven there is only joy and there is no sorrow there is no tear how many of you know that in heaven no angel is moody no angel is having a depression no angel is going through any frustration in the heaven in heaven all angelic beings and all of the heavenly beings that are always joyful there is joy 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 down in their hearts they are always joyful because in the heaven's atmosphere it is full of joyfulness the heaven's atmosphere is full of joyfulness hallelujah so we are called we are right now in his kingdom now listen to me when john the baptist started his ministry from the beginning he made a proclamation or he made an announcement he was like a herald he said the kingdom of god is near is coming in other words he is an announcer announcing everywhere in villages and towns and cities everywhere he is announcing the kingdom of god is coming hey people 
the kingdom of god is coming now herod may be ruling here pilate may be ruling here there may be many governors there may be many emperors but beyond all these kingdoms beyond all these rulership another reign another rule is coming the kingdom of god is near meaning with no time the kingdom of god is going to invade earth i am prophesying looking at you brother sister the kingdom of god is going to possess you the kingdom of god is going to invade into your life to capture you to put you in that kingdom to make you a kingdom citizen i always say as indians we have two citizenships one is indian citizenship and the second is the heavenly citizenship we all have dual citizenships i am excited hallelujah praise god so the kingdom of god is coming it is near it is so close even after jesus's baptism he started preaching the same message which his cousin was preaching john the baptist was preaching the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god is coming it's so near it's coming 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 and after that jesus chose his disciples and he sent them two by two and everywhere they started preaching the kingdom of god is coming 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 the kingdom of god is coming so that was the announcement that was the proclamation of the kingdom then one day as jesus was talking with his disciples and others jesus made a shocking announcement the kingdom of god is in the midst of you now first it was the announcement it is coming 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 now jesus is saying the kingdom of god is in the midst of you meaning where the king is present that is the kingdom where the king is present the will of the king the mind of the king likes and dislikes of the king the government and rulership of the king will come that is the kingdom so i am in the midst of you so the kingdom of god is in the midst of you another time on another occasion jesus cast out a demon from a person and the religious figures they could not uh, comprehend that they didn't like that they said hey if you are casting out demons you are doing this by the help of belzebub hmm? who is belzebub or belzebul belzebul is also known as the the lord of the flies the lord of the flies the lord of the flies means the head fly of a cluster of flies the lord of the flies means the head demon a power a lord of a host of demons meaning lucifer himself jesus said if any kingdom divided in itself will not stand any house divided it in itself will not stand any city divided in itself will not stand if satan is casting out satan how can his kingdom stand meaning the kingdom of satan is still standing a hey, the kingdom of satan is still standing there is no division in the kingdom of satan and it is highly organized and there is hierarchical rulership and systems and networkings in the kingdom of satan in the kingdom of darkness but if i am casting out demons by the holy spirit the kingdom of god has come already come oh think of that think of the sequence that coherence first there was an announcement by john the baptist then jesus then the disciples the kingdom of god is at hand the kingdom of god is nearing it is coming 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 then jesus said the kingdom of god is in the midst of you then jesus said it has come because i am casting out demons by the power 
of the holy spirit that means when i cast out demons from a person the kingdom of god is attacking the kingdom of the devil and the kingdom of the devil is thrown away and the kingdom of god is invading encroaching more and more territories hallelujah par house ministries i am talking to you right now your commission on earth your duty on earth your responsibility on earth is to bring the kingdom of god in people people groups many cities in this world that is the mandate upon you hallelujah praise god then if you go through journey through the scriptures we can understand that you are now a part of the kingdom you are a part of the kingdom of god then it says the kingdom of god is within you how when the holy spirit comes inside of us that is the kingdom of god the government of god has come inside of you when the holy spirit comes what comes heaven is coming inside the king is coming inside the kingdom is coming inside the government of god is coming inside shout a hallelujah praise god hallelujah now listen to me one day jesus was talking to his a, a group of disciples and jesus commanded like they were stated like this he said hey um some of you are standing here before you die before you die you're going to see the kingdom of god coming powerfully into this world that means some people some contemporaries of jesus jesus prophesied that they would see the kingdom of god coming powerfully into this world before they died and it was fulfilled in acts of the apostles chapter 2 and verse number 1 to 4 the 120 people they were the contemporaries of jesus who were, who directly heard the prophecy from jesus the prediction from jesus and they were all waiting and waiting waiting and waiting for the promise from the father 10 days they waited and on the 10th day on the day of pentecost that was a sunday when all of them were praying together in one accord in harmony and unity hallelujah the kingdom of god came powerfully the bible says it was like a mighty wind that the holy spirit entered into that room and filled every person and tongues of fire came upon every person and went down deep into their personalities hallelujah the kingdom power powerful kingdom came into their lives and the kingdom was established in 120 people now it didn't end there if you read matthew chapter 13 13 you can read a lot of kingdom parables one is this the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of god is like a mustard seed when it is it is so uh, it is smaller than all other garden, garden plants but when it is sown into the ground it grows up and becomes larger bigger than any other garden plant it became so big within no time just like that and the kingdom of uh, god is also like a lady who took some yeast and put it in the dough and the next day morning all the the whole batch of that lump of uh, that that dough is fermented silent invasion powerful invasion that is what was happening there in jerusalem when the holy spirit came quickly just like mustard seed it started to grow into a huge big tree the same day when maybe when peter preached for a few minutes a few minutes 3000 people got baptized 
and i surely believe that they were also uh, given the holy spirit because joel the prophet prophesied that in the end times in the last days the holy spirit shall be poured upon all flesh all people all kinds of people and they will prophesy they will talk in tongues they will see visions they will dream dreams all these manifestations of the kingdom so the next day 3000 then it became 5000 then the the number of disciples increased the number of churches increased it was spreading and spreading and spreading it was moving to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south in all directions the kingdom of god was invading in an invisible way capturing people kingdom after kingdom country after country nation after nation ethnos after ethnos culture after culture language after language hallelujah it has come to india and we are captured by that kingdom hallelujah the kingdom of god is not coming in a visible way it comes in an invisible way now somebody say hallelujah John 18 and verse number 36 Jesus said my kingdom is not of this world it is from another world it is from the spirit world it is from the heavenly world it is from the supernatural world that this kingdom is coming shout hallelujah brothers and sisters i have news for you if you have received the lord jesus as your personal savior and lord if the holy spirit has come inside of you according to the bible the kingdom of god has come into your life now this is very important this is very powerful matthew chapter 6 verse number 25 onwards 25 to 31 jesus first started speaking about worrying many people are worrying in this world especially when things go wrong people worry but i have news for you if things can go wrong it can also go right i want to say it again i'm speaking to you brother sister young lady you lost your job are you facing family problems are you facing abandonment are you facing are you going through divorce or separation or are, are were you deceived by some guy you cannot even say all these things to others secretly and confidentially you are going through much in your life can i tell you something do not worry jesus is do not worry about anything i will take care of it i will take care of it many people are worrying about what shall what shall we eat what shall we drink what shall be we where where shall we uh, stay all these things what he can come what will happen to me in the days to come and jesus commanded like this the pagans the pagans they worry about all these things but in my kingdom the system is different in my kingdom the heavenly father provides the heavenly father plans the heavenly father provides everything for his children so do not worry he will take care of it even without even before you pray even before you worry even before you were born even before you understood that you have to bother about all these things the heavenly father has already prepared already reserved already he has Uh, set aside everything for you usually i say like this when a child is born in a maternity ward in a hospital the f- from the very first piece of cloth that the nurse or doctor put you in from the last dress that you are going to wear in the coffin box in between these two pieces of clothes everything for you is provided by the heavenly father if you are a child of god if you are under the government of god jesus says you have to worry about nothing 
everything is provided because you are not of this world you are taken from this world now you are in the kingdom the government of god has come upon you and god has uh, by the way i forgot to tell you that there is no lockdown in heaven there is no lockdown in the kingdom of god there is no recession there is no famine there is no shortage in the kingdom of god did you listen to that there is no lack there is no shortage with god you are a god's child and god is your dad your dad is so rich richer than any richest father in this world hallelujah but how many of you have that assurance that you are a child of god and you are a part of the kingdom you are in the kingdom and the kingdom of god is right now inside of you now jesus spoke about all these things do not worry about what you will drink what you will eat what you will wear etc etc only it is for the pagans who are out of the kingdom of god then reaching verse number 33 in matthew chapter 6 the well known verse seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you seek first the kingdom of god that meaning don't seek drink first don't seek food first don't seek dress your costume first but seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness in other words if you are a child of god if you are born again if you are a part of power house ministries the first priority seek first first means priority prioritize your life this way you have to align your life according to the kingdom culture kingdom rule what is happening with the kingdom of god if you are a part of the kingdom if you are a kingdom citizen the first priority that you have to give is the kingdom of god god is king i am a part of the kingdom so always think about the kingdom kingdom rules kingdom culture kingdom language kingdom currency kingdom scope kingdom hope kingdom life kingdom light everything according to the kingdom of god hallelujah now if you seek first the kingdom of god then his righteousness i already gave you an idea about god's righteousness god's righteousness is the right stand with this king nobody can stand right with this king he is so high so exalted so holy his standards are too high and we shall we fall short of all such uh, uh, standards we have sinned against him we have fallen short of his glory and even all our righteous acts are like filthy rags so what but the only possibility that i have is to give all that filthy rag righteousness to the hands of jesus and to get his righteousness the garment of his righteousness jesus righteousness and put on myself this is called imputed righteousness from jesus with that righteousness any time any occasion of my life i can stand before him without any conscious break hallelujah always remember when we stand before this king before this god we have to take the blood of jesus with us the blood of jesus with us hallelujah because this king a god can never refuse or reject the blood of his son so we will never the carrier of that blood will never be rejected hallelujah so this is my advice i want to give you always think about his kingdom seek his kingdom and his righteousness what is his kingdom righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit that means you have to give a lot of importance to the holy spirit in your life 
because he is the resident helper he is the resident guide he is the resident boss he is the resident ceo in your life listen to him yes boss i will obey the holy spirit will give you promptings guidance and with that you can go ahead say hallelujah quickly i will give you some idea about uh this king our king lord jesus a god he is the king of the universe he is seated on the highest throne he is in control of the entire universe including you the universe includes you and his rulership includes your tiny life he is in control of the nature he is the king over the nature he is the king over the weather he is king over seasons and times he is king over history and everything that is happening on earth uh is in his knowledge but he is not responsible for everything that is happening in this world now he is not the author of diseases he is not the author of coronavirus he is not the author of recession he is not the author of all natural calamities because another agent another kingdom is working here the world is now in a chaos not because of the kingdom of god not because of god some other kingdoms are responsible for that there are human kingdoms operating here the devil's kingdom operating here so the kingdom of god is not responsible for all these havocs all these calamities all this pandemic all these situations that we are in somebody shout hallelujah first john chapter 5 verse number 19 and 20 we read like this we know that we are the children of god shout hallelujah for that and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one god is not in control of the whole world the evil one satan the 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 god of this age the self imposed king is in control of the whole world now that's what the bible says we know also that the son of god has come and he has given us understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true uh, by being his son uh, by by being in his son jesus christ he is the true god and eternal life hallelujah i just want to read one more scripture portion and conclude matthew 12 25 up to 28 Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined every kingdom what does it mean human kingdoms verse number 26 if satan drives out satan he is divided against itself how then can his kingdom stand his kingdom satanic kingdom so in this world there are human kingdoms and satanic kingdom verse number 28 but if It is by the Holy Spirit of God that I drive out demons then the kingdom of God has come upon the kingdom of God so three different kingdoms kingdoms of men human kingdoms kingdom uh, of the devil and God's kingdom quickly not this the kingdom of satan the specialities of the kingdom of satan darkness deception disease division death etc etc the kingdom of god specialities light as i gave you earlier righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit health and strength unity life etc etc these two kingdoms are very much opposite remember this is very very important if you are still in the kingdom of darkness the holy spirit is giving you a chance to jump over into the kingdom of god the kingdom of marvelous light where you can live as a citizen of the king of kings forever and ever where there is no tears where there is no sorrow where there is no poverty ill health etc hallelujah if you want to get into that, that kingdom if you have never been to that kingdom this is the right time you can lay your hands on your hearts and pray this prayer after me lord jesus i 
I I recognize you I as my king and my lord come into my heart oh father let your kingdom come in me let your government come inside of me you are my lord you are my king you are my savior i receive you lord as my personal lord and savior in jesus name amen i just want to pray for you for uh, against sicknesses and the problems that you're facing right now lift up your hands please father i pray for everyone who is sick right now in the name of jesus by the authority you have given me right now i cast out all the elements of the kingdom of darkness from out of these people all the commodities all the goods of the devil's kingdom be thrown out in the name of jesus i strip away all such activities all such bondages and yokes in the mighty name of jesus asthma be healed cancer be healed in jesus name blood pressure be healed in jesus name all kinds of uh, tumors and lumps uh, cysts and everything be gone in the mighty name of jesus hallelujah thank you lord for blessing your people and also father i bless the man of god pastor josh matthew in the name of jesus anoint him more of father bless him more use him more of father i pray for pastor silvia in the name of jesus father bless her anoint her more strengthen her more of father in every way in family in finances in their business in their ministry everywhere and i pray for everyone who is a part of pahas ministries in the name of jesus let them all be blessed of father in an immense way anybody who is not a part of uh, this power of us ministry or by chance maybe you are watching this be blessed in the name of jesus let the government of god come upon you god bless you all bye bye thank you pastor for the encouraging and powerful uh, ministry of the word this morning we are so privileged and honored to receive the rich manner of the word of god and and the wonderful way that the spirit of god used you to minister to us god bless you we love you we continue to uphold all of you in our prayers and we are so privileged honored that you you took your time to minister to us and to share with us that word god bless you thank you so much and uh, church uh, uh, as a family of god we can, we thank god for helping us to come to a close of one more month okay how many know that uh, today is uh, the 29th of uh, november and tomorrow is the last day of november and very on the day after onwards we'll, the month of december begins and uh, everything seems still unsure we're not very sure we are believing we were believing we are hoping to start church uh, live church uh, but uh, still question mark we will surely get back to you we will uh, contact you on whatsapp and other means to help you to understand whether we are starting and when we are starting uh, but we are waiting for uh, still uh, the clarity and in, in every way so that because there was a chances of a second lockdown happening and we don't want to risk anything like that but we are open for it okay so so a lot of people have been questioning what's going to happen for uh, for 31st night and christmas i said we'll take it as we go ahead and we have no other choice so we continue to pray and believe god's very best we pray that each one of you remain safe and use godly wisdom even as you move and have your being and we pray that his angelic protection his blood covering will be over your lives and uh, god will preserve all of us and keep us even as he's kept us all all through this uh, last 8 uh, months and we are believing god uh, for a miracle amen we are believing god for even as the word of knowledge has come we are believing god for a miracle we are believing god that we are going to see his mighty move in our midst in this coming month okay so till then uh, we will update you but till then keep moving and keep doing once again and uh, we would like to encourage and uh, ask you to to release your tithes and your offering into the the church bank account okay and uh, use online methods to to deposit it and we would request you if possible to do it on a sunday itself so it helps us to make things clear but um, as the spirit of god leads you uh, even as you obey that command god will bless you and i pray that there'll be enough and more in your homes in your barns and there'll be no lack amen so we like to close in prayer i'll ask uh, uh, even as we close in prayer i'll ask you to we just believe god 
if there's a need in your life this morning i believe it's already ministered to but if there's anything else and you feel that oh i need just believe god even as we close in prayer that god will meet your need because you have honored him by coming in the presence to hear him and to be worship him this morning amen so let's close in prayer father in heaven we thank you for that precious word that came to us this morning we thank you for this beautiful day that we could come as a family of god as a corporate family and worship you in spirit and truth and we thank you for your sweet presence yes. in our midst because of your shed blood thank you for uniting us as a family of god because of your holy spirit that's inside of us lord and we love you we exalt you we give you the glory and praise and we pray that your presence will be over our lives that you will touch us in a very special way that your precious blood will continue to protect us preserve us in our going out in our coming in and that your angels to stand guard oh lord Lord, we pray, Isaiah 41, that scripture, Lord, that no weapon, no enemy will prosper, but will fall dead before it comes anywhere close to us. Whether it's a virus, whether it's any any other uh, source of uh, instrument that the enemy may want to use. But Lord, we will be divinely covered with your precious blood and your divine protection will be our portion, Lord. Be with each one of us. Help us to have a beautiful month ahead. Help us to have a beautiful week ahead. And Lord, let there be miracles all around us. Even And Lord, help us to see the mighty move of your spirit through our lives, O oh Father, Lord. Bless us and Lord, uh, lead us and guide us and let all glory be to you, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Damien. We thank you for blessings today. We thank you for our partnership, for, our, uh, for the wonderful way that you have united us. Bless uh, Pastor Damien, uh, Sister Shama, uh, Nehemiah, Emmy, yes. and the leadership team and yes. the entire congregation, Lord, all across, mm -hmm. Lord, that you bless them in a very special way. Bless their ministry. Yes. Meet every need of that ministry and the families of Father. And Lord, bless them in a very special way. And Lord, we thank you once again uh, that, Lord, you are a God who knows our hearts yes. cry. Lord, I believe every need of every loved one yes. because they came in your house to worship you is met this morning in the name of Jesus. There's a miracle that's taken place and Lord, the impossible will be made possible, Lord. We thank you, Father, all through the week that all the testimonies that came for Lord. Cover those testimonies with your precious blood, Father. Let them continue to stand strong for the glory of your name and your name alone and let your name be glorified, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Yes. Lead us, guide us. And for those who are waiting for a miracle, Lord, yes. let them see a yes. miracle in the yes. name of Jesus. And let all glory be to you, Lord. Yes, we thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we send your people with this ironic blessing, Lord. Yes, we declare the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give, give you his peace. peace. Shalom. 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 Remember to join us for Wednesday. Zoom prayer, Wednesday for prayer for Amen. BHM family, 7.30 in the evening. Amen. God bless you.